Most know Puerto Rico for its popular beaches or historic forts and cities, but behind the tourist mirage, Puerto Rico is in a crisis. Over 40% of Puerto Rico lives in poverty, while harsh hurricanes and power outages have slowed progression to modern living standards. This has driven many to seek more suitable lives, leading to a 15% population decline in just 25 years. Making up the bulk of this decline are younger, educated people who have created a significant brain drain, an alarming raise in the mean age from 31.3 years in 2000 to 45.8 in 2025. In this video, we're gonna break down these problems and find ways to solve them. One of the biggest problems Puerto Rico faces is its unstable power grid. Just over New Year's, 1.4 million clients across Puerto Rico were left in the dark. This has scared away investors, hurt business, and disrupted everyday life. Over the past decade, this situation has only worsened due to a lack of funding and devastating hurricanes, which have put constant physical and financial stress on the power grid. Unfortunately, simply increasing funding isn't a viable option, as Puerto Rico's electric power authority is $9 billion in debt. Just to complicate matters further, Puerto Rico doesn't actually have natural gas, oil, or coal reserves to produce power, so all of it needs to be imported and refined. My solution to this problem comes entirely in the form of power purchasing agreements. All right, so you see, the government has already given the transportation of power to Luma, a privately owned company, but the production of electricity is still owned by PREPA, the government-owned agency that, if you don't recall, is $9 billion in debt. If Puerto Rico wants a stable power grid and also meet its 2050 goals of 100% electricity produced by renewables, PPAs are their best option. A power purchasing agreement, or a PPA for short, is an agreement with the producer to sell energy that they make at a set price to the consumer. Typically, these contracts last around 25 years and can lead to significant savings for the consumer over the long run, something that's much needed for the government and civilians. But this isn't the best benefit. These PPAs can come in the form of a whole bunch of small solar plants dotted around the island in strategic locations. You see, currently, the majority of electricity is produced on the south side of the island, while the majority of consumers are on the north side. This means that energy needs to travel a long distance on power lines that need constant maintenance. If we were instead able to bring the production right to the consumers, the transportation would be a whole lot less, relieving pressure on Lima, who's a bit overwhelmed at the moment. PPAs from solar farms would also push Puerto Rico to its sustainable goals and end the expensive importation of fossil fuels. In times of hurricanes, the system would be much more redundant. Instead of relying on a few really big power plants that shut down the whole grid if damaged, the use of small solar farms can isolate the damages. The best part is the government would still not be paying a whole lot since they don't own the solar farms, but instead just buy the power like they're already doing with fossil fuels. So that fixes our power problem, but there's still a lot to go over. We touched on hurricanes a second ago, but let's break those down further now. These things are scary and inevitable for Puerto Rico. The best thing we could do is mitigate the damages by building smarter. Because we're looking into not only solving these problems, but also solving them sustainably, I recommend building earthships. These types of houses can withstand extreme winds and protect against mudslides, and they come with a whole host of cool features that lessen the CO2 footprint. For more densely populated areas, container homes could be a smart idea. And no, unfortunately, I'm not looking at the complex, cool looking ones, but the more practical container homes. These can be built affordably and withstand hurricane force winds. Existing structures can be upgraded to have green reefs, which would be far better suited for extreme winds and can help mitigate the flooding in cities by absorbing runoff. This would also give a unique look to towns attracting tourists. The next big problem for Puerto Rico is industry. You see, because Puerto Rico is an island nation, they face significant challenges in industry because they don't really have any major natural resources. More than that, mainland U.S. has exploited and neglected Puerto Rico over the past few decades, hindering growth. Some people have already made amazing videos on this topic, so I encourage you to check those out for more information. But in summary, most of what America has done to revive Puerto Rico's industry has favored big business that's funneled money into the companies and not the local population, hence the 40% poverty rate. We're going to go over the political side of this later in the video, but first I have a few ideas for Puerto Rico's industry that plays to their strength. Puerto Rico's biggest strength is tourism. Now, I don't love the idea of making Puerto Rico the next big Hawaii where the local population is pushed out, but this is a key industry that can definitely benefit Puerto Rico more if done properly. My next proposal is bamboo forest. Currently, deforestation is a growing problem, and with wood demand rising as well as the price, bamboo could be a fantastic investment for the future. Puerto Rico has the ideal conditions to grow bamboo fast with ample rain, and bamboo doesn't require flat land like most crops do, meaning that they don't need to take away from the minimal flat farming land that Puerto Rico has. Puerto Rico would also be a great place for green hydrogen and rocket launchers. This might sound crazy, but hear me out here. First, Puerto Rico doesn't have much of an option when it comes to energy production. If they don't want to import it, they have to produce it renewably, meaning they had already had the infrastructure to produce green hydrogen, which on its own may be a key export in sales in the future. Conveniently, hydrogen is also a common rocket fuel being used in missions like Artemis, the United States' current mission to the moon. Puerto Rico, being close to the equator, can take advantage of centrifugal force, meaning rockets need less fuel to reach orbit. Furthermore, Puerto Rico has less air travel than Florida and Texas, which are United States' primary launch locations, and is located on the ocean so rockets can avoid populated areas. Although the infrastructure would need to be built and there are distance from materials needed to construct rockets, with the space industry growing rapidly and many startups looking for launch and test sites, it's plausible. My last proposal is to produce semiconductors. This is something another island nation, Taiwan, has found monumental success in, and with the United States pushing to produce semiconductors within its borders due to the threat of China, 
Puerto Rico could rise to the occasion. Puerto Rico already has its foot in the door with multiple semiconductor manufacturing facilities and their government pushing to build more. Overall, despite recent brain drain, Puerto Rico has a skilled and educated labor force that holds a lot of untapped potential. But this potential will continue to stay locked up if the government can't get its act together. As an American citizen, it is embarrassing how badly we have treated Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico is considered an unincorporated territory, meaning it doesn't have the benefits of other US states, nor the freedom to make its own laws. For instance, Puerto Rico receives 10 times less Medicaid funding, despite having a poverty rate five times higher than the mainland. Puerto Rico citizens also don't get a vote for president, despite being directly affected by the choices they make. And just to add insult to injury, they can still be drafted in the event of war. So they pretty much get all the disbenefits without any actual benefits. Now that isn't to say Puerto Rico's government hasn't had its own problems, though not as bad as some countries, there has been a significant amount of corruption in its history. Because of this, there's been a misuse of funds that has led the government into an unrepayable debt. Truthfully, I'm not a politician, and I don't know what the best course of action here is, but I know where we are right now is unsustainable. Either the United States needs to make Puerto Rico the 50 year state, or let them be an independent nation where they can operate more freely. There's a chance that they could stay as an unincorporated territory, but in that case, the United States would need to do a far better job working with them. In the end, addressing the unstable power grid would allow for new industries to be established that cater to the island's comparative advantages. The money gained from these industries would feed into the general population, lowering the poverty rate and giving the government much needed funding to build infrastructure, pay back debt, and build more public services. Smarter building techniques would prepare the island for hurricanes and allow it to stand far in the future, while also giving it a unique look to stay out in the world, further attracting investors. Of course, before any of this can happen, we have to start out the government side so it can allow for the speedy recovery process. I hope you enjoyed today's video and in the future we can see some of these new techniques. But for now, that's it for me and I'll see you guys in the next video.